And now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereals shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Pup Wheat and Quaker Pup Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Dad, mother, sister, brother, everyone goes for Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. These ready-to-serve cereals are delicious for breakfast, lunch, or supper. They taste so swell because they're shot from guns. Yes, these giant king-sized grains are exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Wheat or rice shot from guns is nourishing, too. Makes a thrifty deluxe family breakfast with milk and fruit. Tomorrow, try this breakfast treat. Ask for Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. It was clear to King that he and the sergeant were about to start on a trip. But in addition to the supplies that were ordinarily loaded on the sled, there were new items. A pickaxe, a shovel, and the sort of pan that miners use to wash gold. King sniffed them thoroughly as the sergeant was lashing the load. Then he followed the sergeant back into his cabin. King lay down in a corner to consider the situation. It was dark, but they had often hit the trail at night. Still, there was something strange about this trip. The sergeant was taking off his uniform. He put on corduroy trousers, a red and white checked wool shirt a buckskin jacket and heavy boots. King sniffed each of these items carefully. Finally came a bearskin parka and a bearskin cap. Well, boy, how do I look? Oh, what's the matter? Don't you know me? That's exactly the way it should be. Come here, boy, and I'll tell you a secret. We're going to a place called Goldport. And for the duration of the trip, I'm not going to be Sergeant Preston at all. I'm going to be a prospector named Bill Smith. Well, don't you like the name? Well, there's a reason for it. You know what uh, counterfeiters are? Well, maybe you'll do it that. Yes, I've mentioned the word before, and you make a habit of increasing your vocabulary, don't you? Well, don't worry. You don't have to understand vocabulary. Anyway, the inspector believes that these counterfeiters, yes, boy, have their headquarters in Goldport. And he believes that someone like Bill Smith can find out more about them than Sergeant Preston could. Does that explain everything to your satisfaction? Good. How about hitting the trail? Well, come on, let's get started. <laughs> the team was fresh, and the trip was made to Goldport without a stop, except for food. The sergeant drove down the main street of the town early the following afternoon. There was no hotel, but after a few inquiries, he was able to rent a cabin. King superintended the unloading of the sled, and then he and the sergeant walked down the street to one of the cafes. One King, and boy. Hey there, mister. That's quite a dog you got. He'll do till a better one comes along. I'll give you a hundred dollars for him. Make it a thousand, and my answer will still be no. <laughs> I don't blame you. Can you get anything to eat here? It depends on what you want. Well, uh, how about bacon and eggs? Eggs? Sometimes I wonder about eggs myself. Oh? How about them? Do they still taste the same <laughs> as they used to? I had an egg last month. You don't say. How did you have it? Scrambled. Mm, I think that was a mistake. You should have had it fried. More eggy that way. <laughs> Maybe you're right. But if I can't have them at all, what can I have? Uh, steak or beans. I'll take both. Okay. Sit over there by the window. It won't be long. A man and a girl were sitting in a booth near the sergeant's table. The man was huge with heavy black eyebrows and a pugnacious jaw. The girl was dark and very attractive. They seemed to be arguing. Then suddenly the girl laughed. The man reached across the table and slapped her face. 
Instantly, the sergeant was on his feet and crossed to the table. I don't like what you just did. Never mind, stranger. Oh, you don't. Well, what are you going to do about it? I'll show you. Why, you pipsqueak, I'll break you in two. The man shoved back his chair and charged at the sergeant. For such a heavy man, he was extremely fast. There was no denying his power in his shoulders. One hammer-like blow caught the sergeant on the side of his head and turned him around. But he sidestepped the big man's next rush and lashed out with a right and left and hit both their marks. And then out was a battle between brute force on one side and skill and intelligence on the other. The sergeant gave ground occasionally until the big man started to slow down. Then he took the initiative. He stepped inside a wild right and punched his heavier opponent with rights and lefts. The big man tried in vain to ward off the blows. A solid right crashed through to his jaw and he dropped to the floor. For a moment he lay still. And then his hand started for his gun. Get him, boy. Get that dog off. He's got my hand. That's because your hand was trying to get your gun. I'll take it. All right, boy. There. It's empty. Now you can have it. Troy, you... Careful. You want some more? If you know it's good for you, Butch, you'll get out of here. I'm going. Sherry, you coming with me? You know very well I'm not. I'll see you later. I want to shake your hand, mister. Butch had that coming to him for a long time, but everybody in town's scared of him. Huh? The dinner's on me. You sit down, make yourself at home. Everything is on the house. I'd like to thank you, too. Well, I hope you don't mind my taking it on myself. I'm to... grateful. What's your name? Is Bill enough? It's incomplete. All I can add is Smith. That's fine. I'm Sherry Wilmer. How do you do? Why are you here? Prospecting? I have the equipment for it. But you're going to wait for the weather to break before you hit the creek. Well, I may be in town for quite a few days. I'm glad. But I think I should give you a friendly warning. Oh? About what? Mm, about people. Butch isn't the worst in town. No? No, oh, he's a bully and a braggart. But at heart, he's a coward. As a result, he isn't as dangerous as some others. Who, for instance? I hope you don't find out. And if I do? Then it will be too late for me to help. I'm doing as much as I can right now, Bill. Well, if you won't protect me, then I'll have to depend on my dog. Oh, I don't really think you need protection. We'll meet again, I'm sure. So am I. Goodbye. Bye. Bill. When Butch left the cafe, he went directly to the large cabin on the edge of town, where he lived with Ben Stafford and Boris Petrov. <clears throat> He was still trying to repair his appearance when Ben and Boris came in. Well, what has happened to you? Yeah, never mind. Butch, you work for me because you can win fights. You won this one, the other man must be dead. He knocked me down with a lucky punch. Then he thought I was going for my gun, and he sicked his dog on me. Most of this I got fighting the dog off. He grabbed my hand. Did the dog give you both black eyes? Yeah, that happened before. Oh, before the lucky punch. And how did all this start? Uh, Sherry said something made me sore, and I uh, sort of hit her a little. Don't tell me it was Sherry who there gave you There was some the... prospector sitting at the next table. I never saw him before. Came over and slapped my face. Naturally, you had to fight. Why, Sure. I suppose the prospector was about half your size. He was almost as big as me. What do you think of that? I think you probably exaggerate. Ah, never mind. Get yourself fixed up the best way you can. You and Sherry will be leaving for Whitehorse in the morning. Boris has a new batch of bills. And I might add the best he's done so far. Really, Boris, they're nearly perfect. What's the matter with you? Nothing. I'm only wondering about the dog. The dog? At a command from his master, he grabbed Butch's gun hand. He must have been trained to do that. Let me see your hand, Butch. Well, he didn't bite through the skin. He just happened to get my coat in his mouth. He happened to. I see. And he shook the hand. He almost shook it off. Mm -hmm. Well trained. What are you driving at, Boris? It is unusual for a prospector's dog to be trained in police methods. What? Police methods? Yes. That is why I wonder about the dog and the man who owns him. Are you sure that he is a prospector, Butch? He looks like one. I don't know anything about him. You better ask Sherry. She was treating him like a hero when I left. Left where? The nugget. Then I had better go have a look at this stranger. I've traveled all over the Yukon. It's possible I have seen him someplace. Go ahead. If my suspicions are correct, something must be done. Yeah, you're right. That's a good idea. Something drastic. 
I will not be long. The two men waited for the Russian's return. Butch held a piece of ice to his eye while Ben paced the floor. You know, I didn't like that guy from the first time I set eyes on him. Yeah, that's understandable. He's a mounty. I'm sure he is. If he is, it means we either give up and get out of here or else. Now, those plans can come later. Yeah, I'll take care of him. Yeah, you did a fine job on your one attempt. Yeah, i use a gun this He's time. quiet. But Ben, I... He's for us now. Well? Well, did you find him? I found him. I never saw the man before. Good, I'm glad to hear it. I don't mind tangling with the law when I have to. Now, wait. The dog that is with him. Yeah, that dirty mongrel. On the contrary, a fine dog. He is perhaps a famous dog. Did you ever hear of King... Yeah, mm. even you, huh? You think I am certain, then. And if the dog is king, then the man must be Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police. Personally, I do not want to give up our business. Oh, neither do I. Nor go to jail. No. Then there is only one solution to the problem. Sergeant Preston must die. <laughs> We'll continue our story in just a moment. Say, here's the way and the only way to tell how downright swell tasting Quaker puffed wheat and rice really are. You just taste them, that's the way. Talk about flavor. Just pour yourself out a bowl full of this famous cereal shot from guns. Try either kind. Then add some milk or cream and top with fruit. Sliced bananas, for instance. Mmm, man, oh man. See if you ever tasted anything better. You'll say that Quaker Puff wheat or rice is in a class by itself. That's because their choice plump grains of wheat or rice actually exploded up to eight times normal size. King size grains they are, shot from huge guns to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. Important too, Quaker Puff wheat or rice are nourishing. Furnish restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Don't wait to try wheat and rice shot from guns. You will like both delicious kinds. Ask for Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice in the big red and blue packages. Now to continue our story. On the evening of Sergeant Preston's arrival in Goldport, Ben, Butch, and the Russians stopped in at Sherry's cabin and told her their suspicions concerning the sergeant's identity. The girl refused to believe it. It's ridiculous. It's true. What do you know about it? You don't want to admit it because you're gone on the guy. That makes just as much sense as the other. We will gain nothing by arguing. Boris is right. Ben, the man has a wonderful dog, I grant you. Why does that make him a mounty? What does he call the dog? I didn't hear him call him anything. Even if the dog's name were King, it wouldn't prove anything. King's a famous dog. All right. Lots of people are calling their dog king. Honestly, for growing... Oh, wait, men. wait a minute. We've got to face the possibility this man is a Mountie. I don't... You have to face it, too. What are we going to do if he is? Nothing. She's gone on him. Keep quiet. You've passed as much of the money as we have. You'll go to jail just as quickly. You must help us, Sherry. We need your help. And if you don't come through for us, you'll start out for Whitehorse tomorrow. You won't come back. You have... Butch kill me? There'd be an accident. You... You'd kill me? Very well, yes. Just like that? You have your choice. Hmm. What is it you want me to do? Now, listen. About 11 o'clock, Butch will fire a shot near the end of the main street. That's pretty close to this cabin. Ben explained his plan to the girl, and she listened intently. She bowed her head... But that was the only indication of her reaction. And finally, he reached the end. When he opens that door in the tunnel, we'll all be waiting inside the room. He'll be in the light, and we'll let him have it. There's one thing I don't like, Ben. Nobody ask your opinion. But why can't we do it someplace else? That's where we have the plates and the press and our stock of paper at the mine. Why did we choose the mine for our operations, Butch? Because it's away from the trail and nobody goes there. Exactly. And there is no better place for an ambush. No one can see us or hear us. 
Besides, it'll be easy to dispose of the body. Hey, that's right. And I know a good place. When the time comes, Butch, we're waiting for Sherry's answer. I'll do it. Good. I knew you wouldn't let us down. On one condition. Oh, what condition? I'll know whether he's a Mountie or not before the evening's over. We're not leaving it up to you to decide that. Oh, yes, you are. This won't work without me. If I decide he's only a prospector named Bill Smith, then I'll pass the whole thing off as a joke. That is a good idea. Mm. You think so, Boris? Oh, but yes. She will be in a position to know for sure. Why go to the trouble of committing a murder if there is no need? Okay, we'll leave it at that, then. I've had a look at this Bill Smith, though. Even in a lumberjack shirt, he carries himself like he's wearing a uniform. You go through with it, Sherry. To save your own skin, you'll have to go through with it. The three men left the cabin. At 11 o'clock that night, the sergeant finished checking over the notes he had made that day and pushed back his chair from the table. <sighs> Pretty warm in here, King. Wouldn't you rather sleep with the dogs out and back tonight? <laughs> no, so you won't move. Strange cabin, you're going to stand guard, is that it? All right, all right, you're the boss. A shot, King, somewhere close. The sergeant threw open the door. A light snow was falling. A girl was running down the street toward the cabin. A cherry, King. Let me in, please. Close the door. What's the matter? What's happened? Someone shot at me. I'd been spending the evening with Mrs. Murphy. Yes? I just walked up the steps to my cabin. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid to go inside, so I turned around and ran down here. We'll take a look around. No, you won't find anyone. Just let me stay here for a little while. Well, that's all right. You stay here and bolt the door, but we're going to take a look around your cabin. Which one is it? The end of this row. It won't take us long. Come on, boy. This must be it. Doesn't seem to be anyone around, does it, boy? No. What are you sniffing at? Oh, footprints. It was Sherry made those. Yes, boy, I see. She didn't tell us the truth, did she? Footprints coming down, but none going up the steps. She was inside her cabin when the shot was fired. Come on, King, let's find out what this is all about. The sergeant and King returned to their own cabin. Bill. Did you see anyone? No. I didn't think you would. Who do you think fired the shot? I don't know. You must have some idea. Well, I want to tell you something that happened to me about a week ago. Go right ahead. I... I stumbled on an old mine outside of town. I went into the tunnel and followed it until I came to a door. I pulled it open and I... I was in a room... Someone was living there. There was a cot and some chairs and a table and something that looked like a printing press. Oh? And, and a pile of paper and some stores. I, I didn't know what to make of it, but the place made me nervous and I left. I'd started back for town when, when I turned around and saw a man standing near the opening of the mine. He called something after me. I, I kept right on and I drove the team as fast as I could. Is that all? Yes, except... Well, ever since then, I think someone's been trying to kill me. Mm. Sherry, if you're in danger, I'm going to do everything in my power to protect you. There, there's nothing you can do. From what you've told me, you seem to be in trouble because you went into that old mine. I'll make a trip out there myself and see what's going on. No, don't. Why not? Bill, if you go out there, I... Oh, don't. I don't want to be responsible for anything happening to you. But you've made me feel responsible if anything happens to you. I've got to go, Sherry. It isn't any business of yours. I'll go to Dawson and report this to the Northwest Mounted. No, you've already done that. You mean you're... Yes. Uh, it's my duty to investigate your story. It isn't true. Well, I'm sure there's some truth in it. King and I are heading for the mine right now. Oh, right, if you won't listen to me. I'm coming too. There's no need. It isn't as easy to find as... You will need me, Bill. I'm coming, too. After leaving the trail outside of town, Sherry directed the sergeant toward the mine. It was obvious to both the sergeant and King that they were following some recent tracks made by not one, but two sleds. 
When they reached the opening of the mine, the sled tracks continued on to the woods beyond. There were tracks made by snowshoes coming back from the woods. King sniffed at them. They led directly into the mine. Oh, King. Oh, your head, Oh, no. You see? Someone's been here recently. Yes. I have a hurricane when I have to the sled. You're going in? Of course. I want to see this mysterious room. Perhaps I'll even find out who's living there. Wait. You can stay here. Sherry's impulse was to stop the sergeant. But another part of her mind forbade it. Don't be a fool. The only way to stop him is to tell him the whole truth. If you do that, well, you'll go to jail for 20 years. Forget about him, Sherry. He isn't your kind. Save yourself. No. No, I won't stay here. I'm coming with you. All right, Sherry. Let's go. They entered the mine. The shaft led straight into the hill for nearly a hundred feet. King walked close beside his master, the girl directly behind them. The shaded light from the lantern hardly reached the timbered sides of the tunnel. But the dog knew there were men ahead. They might be dangerous. <laughs> the sergeant's hand on his head reassured him. His warning had been acknowledged. They came to a turn in the tunnel. How far is the room? We'll be there soon. This tunnel leads straight to the door. And the door opens this way. Yes. You expect to find someone in the room? It's possible. Better stay well behind me. But just as the rays of the hurricane lantern picked up the solid surface of the door ahead, Sherry forced her way past the mountain and grasped the no. handle of the door. Let me... Sherry, stop her, King. Me... King forced the girl back against the wall of the tunnel, but she pulled the door open with her. A volley of shots came out from inside the room. There was a lantern hanging directly over the door, and the sergeant who had dropped to the floor of the tunnel shot it out. He hid the hurricane lantern inside his pocket, and both room and tunnel were in complete darkness. The sergeant, King, and Sherry were lying close together on the floor at the side of the tunnel. Why did you do that? You saw what happened. They'd have killed you. They'd have killed you if it hadn't been for King. It doesn't matter about me. I'll stay and face them. Get out of here fast. No, Sherry. It isn't the way the Northwest Mounted Police work. You're the one who's going to leave. There are three of them in there. You haven't a chance against them. Go on, Sherry. Hurry. I'm one of them. You must realize that. I might try to escape. No, I'm sure you'll wait to see what happens. Bill? Yes? Good luck. The man inside the room fired again as they heard the footsteps of the girl disappearing down the tunnel. But the half-open door protected her side of the passageway. She's made it, King. The sergeant crawled forward and reached out in the darkness until his hand touched the door. He pulled it wide open. Then he blew out the hurricane lantern. He waited a moment and then tossed it into the room. Three guns fired at the sound, and the sergeant fired at the gun flash. Stop, stop. This can't be. That gun fly of his two friends. It is up to you. The sergeant crawled back from the door opening and crouched beside King once more. No sound came from the room. We got two of them, boy. But the third man isn't going to fire again. He knows he'll only make himself a target. I can't see him, King. It's up to you. Go get him, boy. The man with the gun, go get him. At the order and without a sound, King began to crawl forward. He moved only a few inches at a time, but steadily until he was inside the room. And then he stopped to allow his keen eyes a chance to take stock of the room and the shadows in it. His sense of smell helped him. Two men were lying near the far wall. One of them was moaning slightly. There was another man hiding behind something made of iron. And that man had a gun in his hand. That was the man the sergeant had sent him after. He must crawl around the iron object to reach the man. And he must do it so quietly that the man would never suspect. Inch by inch, King hardly dared breathe now. Around the strange iron bulk, and now at last, the crouching form of the man. His gun hand raised slightly. His head turned toward the door. It was time to spring. Oh, 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 man, what's the matter? A dog. He's on top of me. Shoot him. I can't. He shook the gun out of my hand. All right, boy, I'm coming. Hold him till I strike a light. <coughs> get, get this dog off me. Not till this lantern's lit. Now you can let him up, King. Oh, I've got his gun. Oh, you... You must be Ben Stafford. Yeah. Help me, I'm dying. I doubt it, Butch. I'll tell you everything you want to know. Just help me. This room's all the evidence I need. Press, paper, and plates. Get those guns lying on the floor, King. You two and the man who's unconscious are under arrest in the name of the Queen. 
Thank you, boy. Now the other one. What are you going to do with this? Take you back to Dawson? Thank you, King. I'll watch Ben here while I fix up the other two. Butch had been wounded in the leg. There were no bones broken, and the sergeant had him bandaged in a few minutes. Boris had been wounded in the left side. It was more serious. And although he regained consciousness as the sergeant worked over him, he had to be carried from the mine. Butch can walk if you give him a hand, Ben. Get going. Okay. Come on. Oh, take it easy. Watch him, King. I'll carry this man. And outside, as the sergeant had prophesied, they found Sherry waiting for them. Bill, I'm glad it turned out this way. So am I. You captured the three of them all by yourself. Oh, no. King helped, and so did you. I brought you here so they could kill you. You changed your mind at the last minute. Well, I couldn't let you open that door. Even even if it meant jail for me. You'll have to stand trial with these men, Sherry. But I'll have to tell the truth on the witness stand. It was you who brought me here. It was through you that I was able to get the evidence against the others. If you do go to jail, it won't be for long. I... Thank you. Well, what about afterwards? Will you stay in the Yukon? No. I'll go home and start over again. <laughs> and I want to thank you, King, for saving my life and, and giving me another chance. Yes, boy. It's thanks to you this case is closed. <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Say, maybe it's hard sometimes to make up your mind which you like best, Quaker Puff wheat or Quaker Puff rice. Well, sir, here's what you do. Don't miss out on either kind of these delicious, ready-to-serve cereals. Keep a supply of both kinds on hand at all times. Wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the big Quaker red and blue package. That's the way to get the original, crisp, fresh, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The breakfast cereal shot from gun. Yes. Yes. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of the false trail. The trail to Dawson. King and I had been over that trail many times and thought we knew it pretty well. But the day we heard a woman scream as we neared the trading post, started a train of events that led us into a battle of wits with one of the smartest criminals we'd ever met. It was a false trail and a danger. Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company. <laughs>